Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at noon. We start with a story that's new at noon. Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton is laying out his budget plan for 2016. Hi everyone and thanks for joining us. Governor Dayton just unveiled his budget at a news conference in St. Paul. Top priorities include boosting broadband internet infrastructure, expanding early education programs, and offering tax credits to more Minnesota parents. Lawmakers are working with a $900 million budget surplus this year, and how to spend it will be the focus of this session. Republicans have called for more tax cuts using some of the money to pay for a transportation funding package. We should know within the hour who the next president of the University of North Dakota will be. Interviews with the three final candidates have been completed, and now the Higher Ed Board is meeting to decide which candidate will be selected. Dr. Steve Shirley is the only one with North Dakota ties to make the cut. Before winning the job at Minot State, Shirley was president of Valley City State. The others being considered are former Congressman Mark Kennedy, who heads up a graduate program at George Washington University, and Dr. Nagy Naganathan is the Dean of College of Engineering at the University of Toledo. The five-time defending champion Bison football team will begin their quest for number six on another national stage. NDSU's first game of the year will be televised on ESPN for the FCS kickoff on ESPN at 6.30 p.m. on August 27th. The green and gold will be taking on FCS quarterfinalist Charleston Southern in the season opener. North Dakota State begins spring practice Wednesday, March 23rd and will conclude spring drills with the annual green and gold spring game at 1.30 p.m. Saturday, April 23rd at the Fargo Dome. A singer, single car crash in western North Dakota kills a woman after she was ejected from her car last night. The crash happened one mile southeast of Sentinel Butte, North Dakota, just before 8 p.m. That's just west of Medora. The woman was driving west on 35th Street when she lost control of her car, rolled, and was thrown from her car. She was pronounced dead on the scene, and North Dakota Highway Patrol is not releasing her name until they have time to notify the family. A Wapaton man is facing charges after a fiery crash early this morning. The Richland County Sheriff's Office says Jacob Silvernail was driving just after 2 a.m. on County Road 81 when he lost control of his truck, rolled, and then started on fire. Silvernail was able to get out of his truck and was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. He was then arrested for suspicion of DUI. Well, most of us in the valley woke up to what felt like spring showers, but Unfortunately, I don't think it'll feel like spring in the upcoming forecast. Let's go ahead and check in with what we can expect with meteorologist Lisa Green. Lisa? Good, good afternoon. We do have some rain showers still hanging around here this afternoon. However, we're really starting to clear out for now. There are some changes coming up in the forecast. Here's a look at our radar and satellite picture. You can see there's still some rain showers up in the northern two-thirds of the valley, but some clearing starting to happen in southeastern North Dakota. We'll zoom in here to show you the spring just exiting the Crookston region, also stretching up Highway 75 there as well as some light rain showers occurring and then over toward the northwest angle in the Bedette area still getting some rain showers and a lot of clouds over in that area. But again, we are starting to clear out here in Fargo Moorhead and stretching back over toward Jamestown. We're at 50 degrees, currently a very mild start to the day and we remained on that mild side. 47 in Grand Forks, it's 41 in Langdon and 43 in Wadena and taking a peek outside. Of course, we could still see a few clouds out there, but also some blue sky as well. It'll be a br bit breezy this afternoon with a mix of some sun and clouds for the Fargo-Moorhead area with winds gusting into the 20s and cooling off for tonight. We talked about some changes on the way. It comes in the form of some snow for some of us. I'll have details on what you can expect in just a few minutes. Thanks, Lisa. Fargo police are looking for at least two people who robbed a man outside of the downtown Fargo frying pan restaurant early this morning. It all happened around 2 a.m. when a man was eating and another man asked him to go outside for a cigarette. He did, but when they got out there, the suspect and a second man demanded the man's wedding ring. When the man refused to give over his ring, he was hit in the head and left unconscious. When he came to, his wallet was gone, but thankfully, he still had his wedding ring. He told police he didn't know the person who asked him to go out for a smoke. Investigators are looking at the restaurant surveillance video to gather more information. 
Fargo police are encouraging anyone who might have any information regarding the incident to contact them. Authorities have arrested a South Dakota man who they say sexually abused two girls while living at a Minot Air Force base. 39-year-old Thad Richard, a former member of the Air Force, faces three counts of gross sexual imposition. According to a detailed criminal complaint, an FBI special agent discovered Richard abused the two girls between 2007 and 2009 at a home on base. The complaint shows Richard forced one of the girls to have sex with him and fondled the genitals of the other. The FBI investigated after learning the girls lived on a South Dakota reservation. Richard left the Air Force in 2013, but continued living on the base as a civilian. He is scheduled to appear in court on April 21st. Another crucial day of primaries is underway, and a clearer picture of the nomination is expected after tonight's results. We find our Washington Bureau's Peter Zampa in Columbus, Ohio, keeping an eye on that crucial Midwestern state. We're here at the Columbus Metropolitan Library just outside of downtown. It's a huge day at the polls here in central Ohio and a huge day for a governor trying to keep his presidential hopes alive. In most projection polls, today's primaries are set up to be big for Trump and Clinton. While Bernie Sanders isn't expected to win a single state, he could make a few races close in terms of delegates. On the other side of the aisle, Trump is a favorite across the country, though John Kasich says he's confident he'll win his winner-take-all Buckeye state. If he fails to do so, the math will be heavily in Trump's favor moving forward. He's projected to take winner take all Florida by a large margin. We spoke with Kasich last night at his rally. He tells us he will win his home state. We're doing just fine. The last governor standing, we're down to a handful of candidates, and I think people will reward the fact. Uh, you know, that I've been able to, uh, to, to be able to rise, in fact. With both races expected to come down to the wire, all eyes are right here on Ohio. We could see the most consequential results of the election thus far come poll closing time. Reporting in Columbus, I'm Peter Zampa. Five states are holding primaries tonight. We'll bring you the updates throughout the evening on ValleyNewsLive.com and Valley News Live 10 at 10. And as a reminder, you can also follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates on the Valley News Live Facebook page. Just be sure to like Valley News Live, and you'll stay informed all day. A park in Moorhead is getting some major money from the state of Minnesota, and the city says they'll use it to make upgrades. The MB Johnson Park was awarded more than $1 million in grant money from the Greater Minnesota Regional Parks and Trails Commission. That park is in the Longfellow neighborhood of North Moorhead. A few of the upgrades people will see, family restrooms, a new picnic shelter, a bike pedestrian bridge across Snaky Creek, and paved walking and hiking trails. Coming up, it's something tens of millions of women suffer from every year. New insights into migraines. But next, weather to plan your day. You're watching Valley News Live on TV, online, and on the go. Always on, wherever you are, whenever you need to know. Valley News Live.